Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about blood and bone marrow. We're going to talk about bone marrow cells, including the megakaryocytes, which make platelets. Uh, and so if you look at, at uh, hematopoiesis, you can see you start with a stem cell, a pluripotent cell, a cell that can give rise to various other cells. And then you see the lineage of the cells change. It makes a red blood cell. Uh, this is uh, uh, the eosinophil, neutrophil, basophil uh, from the uh, monocyte series, as you can see. Um, um, and then uh, we have the, the macrophage come from the monocyte. Uh, lymphocytes give you plasma cells or T killer cells. Uh, and then we get platelets from the uh, megakaryocyte. And so if we look at uh, hematopoiesis, we can see red blood cells being formed, the red blood cells of particular sites, and then you can have younger cell. You've got a nucleus here, no nucleus here, uh, and uh, a blue cytoplasm go from a polychromatic blue and, and, and blue and pink, and then mostly mostly blue. So this is a red blood cell series. This is the uh, neutrophilic myelocyte series. This is the mature uh, neutrophil that we see. We see a band cell. Uh, we can see indentation, uh, a lot of nonspecific granules, and then the uh, blue cytoplasm. So if we look at erythropoiesis, red blood cell formation, stimulated by erythropoietin. So it's stimulated by a protein that's produced in the kidney in response to low oxygen tension. So low oxygen tension will induce erythropoietin, which will cause uh, the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Erythrocyte has no nucleus. Reticrocyte has no nucleus, but gray cytoplasm, a little blue tint to it, as you can see. Not red necessarily, but kind of blue tint. And that cytoplasm is the same as the orthochromatic erythroblast. You can see it's the same, but this one has a nucleus. And then as the nucleus gets larger, actually it starts out large and gets smaller with, uh, with development. Uh, it's a little larger with a polychromatic, and you can see the blue uh, and the pink cytoplasm, polychromatic. And then the basophilic erythroblast, you've got blue cytoplasm here, blue cytoplasm, and a spherical nucleus is what we see. So the nucleus uh, gets smaller and then ultimately is eliminated. Uh, the cytoplasm starts out blue, mixes blue with hemoglobin, ends up with few ribosomes, and then, um, and then just hemoglobin, which makes the red blood cell red. If we look at these with an electron microscopic view, a red blood cell, as you see, looks very homogeneous, uh, kind of boring inside, other than it's got the hemoglobin, which is very important. Uh, the reticocyte uh, has uh, a hemoglobin and uh, ribosomes, and the orthochromatic has uh, more ribosomes. Uh, the polychromatic has more ribosomes, and then uh, you have lots of ribosomes uh, in the basophilic and the, and the uh, pro uh, myelos, uh, pro uh, erythroblast. Uh, and here we can see the polychromatic uh, one, which has a combination of ribosomes, as we saw before, and uh, hemoglobin there. So if we look at these uh, again, the mature one the uh, is the uh, erythrocyte. A reticrocyte is the immature one passed off. Uh, ortho has a nucleus that ultimately is removed. Polychromatic has blue and pink uh, in through there. The nucleus is, get, is less dense. And then a nucleus is, is really spherical here. Uh, pro erythroblast, very blue cytoplasm that you see there. And that occurs in bone marrow. And we can see bone marrow. We can see some granules here. This is an extra vascular space outside a blood vessel. This is a blood vessel right in here. There's a blood vessel, and you can see where a reticrocyte is squeezing through from the extravascular space into the blood space to be uh, into the blood cells. And here we can see where uh, uh, an infection has occurred, and you have my, uh, my, um, margination. Margination is when uh, blood cells stick uh, to the little venules, as you can see here. Uh, and then they migrate through. So they marginate through uh, in through there. And here's some that's already extravascular. That is, they've, out, they've come outside the vasculature uh, to be able to do their job. So in summary, blood is fluid in cells. Uh, and cells provide oxygen. They provide the immune system. 
uh, and uh, the platelets prevent clotting, uh, prevent uh, a loss of blood by the clotting process. And it occurs in bone marrow, and uh, in the affected states, we have a lot of uh, white blood cells that are produced, uh, and we can identify those cells in blood. There's red blood cells and platelets, uh, and here we can see their lobulated nucleus or non lobulated nucleus or horseshoe shaped. A couple questions. Erythropoiesis uh, is a clonal expansion of erythro, uh, erythrocyte progenitor cells derived from the pluripotent stem cells of bone marrow. Yes. Occurs in extravascular space of the bone marrow. Yes. Is stimulated by a protein secreted by the kidney. Yes. Erythropoietin E. Uh, Granulopoiesis is the production of neutrophils, yes, eosinophils, yes, basophils, yes, A, B, and C. We want to thank the original sources of images, uh, drawings, uh, and photographs uh, which made this presentation possible. Thank you. This is the end of the blood and bone marrow. We're going to talk about bone marrow cells, including the megakaryocytes, which make platelets.